Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God. Blessed Savior, I surrender all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, just want to bless you with this word. I was just doing my devotion this morning and I just felt like, you know what? Um, I feel like God wants to speak to someone you've been, you know, asking this kind of question. Like, you know what, well, Pastor, I pay my tithes and I give my offerings. What's going on? Why am I not blessed? Why am I not seeing the prosperity that God's word clearly says that I ought to have? So I feel like, um, you know, this word will bless someone. So, you know, if you are able to join me this morning for devotion, um, that would be great. Um, other than that, you can listen to the message later on. Um, this message will change your life. I really believe this because I was just just sitting and meditating and thinking about this thing. And this scripture just came to my mind and God started downloading to my spirit. What I want to share with you, this is right off the press. You know, this is just straight off, you know, the heart of God. So, um, you know, I want you to get this, get this message, really, really get this. But before we um, start to share, I just want us to just, uh, you know, let's pray for a while. Amen. Let's just uh, pray. And just commit this session into God's hands. Amen. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise. For you are worthy. You are holy, God. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I want to just... Um, Let's just, before we just get into the word, let's just worship for like a minute, you know. Let's, the Bible says, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So let's worship with this um, hymn, I Surrender All. On to Jesus I surrender to thee I freely give I surrender all I surrender all And on to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all oh, to Jesus. To Jesus I surrender humbly at His Jesus he is worthy he's awesome this is my devotion time so if you want to join me that's great I'm just worshiping 
for a moment before I go into the word. But if you just want to worship and let's just praise God for a second because we need to, we need to just spend time in his presence for a bit. And unto thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You are awesome. There is none like you, Jesus. I love you with my, all my heart, Jesus. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your love. Thank you for you loved me with an everlasting love. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. They never change. Who is like you, God? Who is like unto you, God? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. I thank you for this awesome day, a brand new day. And I pray, Lord, for everyone listening just now, that, Lord, you will touch their heart with this word. That this word will bring a transformation, a change. That this word will not just be empty words, but there will be a power behind the words that lord everyone that listens and puts into practice and takes you know account of these things we're saying and puts it into action lord that will reap the benefit that will see the results and lord it will not just be words but over power and life will flow forth in jesus name amen i'm sure many of you have asked this question you know i give my tithes i give offerings i i sow seeds i do all i do and yet it seems like nothing is happening. It looks like, you know, there is no financial change. It's like it's, I'm still in the same boat year in after year, you know, going, you know, just the same way over and over again. There's no difference, no change. What is going on? I want to try, try <laughs> being the underlying word um, to help and explain what is happening. That perhaps, you know, you might be able to see what's going on wrong or how wrong the message we've been taught regarding giving and receiving, giving and receiving. It's going to be a balance. I try to be as balanced as I can. God help me. So I'm going to start from one scripture that is always used when, when we talk about giving and receiving. Um, it's Luke chapter 6 from verse 38. Luke 6, 38. I'll start from that scripture. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, it says, give and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Amen. Now we've had so many prosperity preachers use this same scripture, and all they tell you is just give your money into my into my ministry, or you know, give your money into my life, or whatever it is, sow your seed. And miraculously, money will come into your bank account. How many of you have heard that said before? I've heard it so many times, I can't count it. So many times we've been told, just sow your seed, you know, give this offering. As soon as you give this offering, immediately God will open up the window to heaven. Immediately your bank account will be filled with money. You know, God will multiply your seed a hundred times, you know. Uh, just go back home and just sit down and twiddle your thumbs and don't do anything. Miraculously, money will come into your bank account. I've heard this preach so many times. And it's a shame that when the pastors are not preaching the full gospel. That's one side of the equation. I don't knock that. No, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking giving. But they're only preaching one side of the equation. There's another side of the equation before you start receiving the multiple harvest or the bountiful harvest or the measure, um, press down, shake it together, running over. There's another side. It's like one plus one equals two. But if you take the one out, like if you take one plus zero, you don't get two anymore. It's not, does he, the equation doesn't balance. I'll go, go back, let's go back and read that scripture in Luke 6 verse um, 38. It says, give, and it will be given to you. Pause. A good measure. Now, we need to go back and understand the context. Now, when you read the Bible, a good Bible um, 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 study is to be, is, the scriptures is to be read in context and in the culture as well. 
Now, the people Jesus was speaking to in this day and age were Jews who lived obviously in Jerusalem and things like that. So they understood what he said. Immediately, he used the word measure. What does that word measure mean? When I was reading this thing, this, this what I'm sharing to you right now came as I was lying on my bed meditating and this scripture came to my spirit and the Lord said to me, what's the meaning of that measure? I've never thought about this before. What I'm sharing, I've never thought about this. And he said, what does that word measure mean? And I, I began to think and I came and I read the word and I'm like, whoa, hold on a minute. That word measure was what they were using in the marketplace in that day and age when they measure their wheat or measure their grains or things like that it was a measure with which they used to trade do you understand what i'm saying what jesus was explaining when he used the word a good measure a good measure now that measure was the the, the size or the container that we used to measure the grain and the food or whatever when they did business so you give the, they give the money and the person will give you the measure of rice or of wheat or of grain or whatever you know food or item the person was buying so it was a good measure so instantly what that means is he was referring to a marketplace scenario instantly he took them to the marketplace scenario and said in the marketplace there's an exchange of goods and services you give me the you you pay the money and the person gives you the measure of the goods let's say if it's rice or whatever it is that the person is buying there's an exchange so if you go back to the scripture let's read it again when you give when you give the bible says it will be given to you a measure it will be given to you a measure that measure, you can translate that to mean a marketplace idea. A marketplace idea is the measure Jesus was referring to. When you give, now what, what the prosperity preacher will tell you, that as soon as you give your money, instantly, immediately, by magic, your bank account will begin to be, you know, uh, money will start entering your bank account instantly. You'll be debt free. How many of you have heard this? You want to you want to be debt free? You know, just sow this um, um, one thousand dollars into my ministry. You know what? And instantly you'll be debt free. You know, pay your 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 months your months rent rent or your months um, uh, mortgage into my bank account or into my ministry. Instantly you're going to be debt free. This is prosperity message gone to crazy. That is crazy. And so many believers are being caught in this same cycle. What Jesus was teaching here, he says, when you give, a good measure will be given to you by God. When you give the seed of money, whatever it is that you give, a good measure, which is an idea. That, like I said before, a measure was the unit or like a unit of trade with which they, they exchange goods and services in Jesus' day in the marketplace. Amen. That measure is an idea. That measure is a talent, is a gift, is, a, is, 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 is something that you're going to be paid for. Amen. What is money? Money of itself has no value. Money of itself is the value you and I attach to it. Amen. That is money. Money is like, it's paper. It's worthless of its own. You cannot eat money. You cannot carry 10, 10 pounds or ten dollars or whatever currency you use you can't eat the physical paper what you do is you take that money you go to the to the marketplace and you buy the food that you need to eat you want to eat bread you take your money and you go and buy 10 you know five pounds worth of bread or 10 pounds of bread or whatever currency you use and you exchange your money for a good or a service so you exchange your money for a measure of bread do you understand what the measure is the measure is a service the measure is a good or service that you exchange money for so what god is saying here is, is when you give a measure will be given to you listen a good measure a good measure will be given to you, which is an idea, it's a concept, it's a design, it's a goods or service that you can then go and use to exchange for money. When you go and transact that goods or service, money of equal value will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men begin to pour into your bosom, into your lap. The bosom was like um, like a man putting his shirt, 
you know, like this, and they begin to pour money into it. Why? Because he has a good measure. He has a good idea. He has a good business concept. He's got, he's got a goods or service. He's, he's doing something industrious. You know, that is why the Jewish people are so rich. They are, they are owners of businesses. They are owners of, you know, hotels, owners of, um, you know, uh, 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 enterprises and you know, whatever it is, they, they are so industrial. Whatever, whatever community they go into, they start trading. They start opening businesses. They have shops, lines of shops. They have retail chains. You know, why? Because they are not waiting for, oh God, these are the same people. These are the same Israelites, the same Jews that we are copying or, or more or less modeling our Christianity from the Bible. It's based on the Jewish concept or the Jewish, you know, um, uh, 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 um, teachings basically, but go and ask them how they how they are get, getting blessed. We talk about the blessings of Abraham. Abraham blesses our mind. Then we quote the scripture and say, Abraham blesses our mind. Therefore, I'm just going to give my seed and I'm going to sit in my house and magically money will begin to enter my bank account without me doing anything. That is fraud. If that begins to happen, you know you are almost you're, you're committing fraud. So sometimes we need to balance the prosperity message. When the preacher tells you, when you give your seed, he needs to explain to you that, listen, you need to go back and be industrious. You need to go back and get involved in some kind of trade, some kind of business. You need to go to work. You need to, you know, whatever it is. You need to, when you, when you work, what does your work do? Your work is an exchange for your, of your time for money. That's what your work is. So you go into your work, you spend the time at work, you give them a value or a service, you provide a service to your employer and he pays you the amount of money you agree regarding the time that you spend at that working place. That is the exchange of value. So you're exchanging your value for money. You're exchanging your service for money. The same way you can exchange, you know, you know, selling goods and services. You know, you can, you can get into a business where you sell whatever you want to sell. And you maybe you like the bread, for example, I talked about a baker, for example, you know, he bakes bread and he gives the bread and someone else pays him an equal value of money. That's, that's the measure we're talking about. You need an idea. You need a concept. You need, you need something that you would do that people will be able to pay you uh, the goods and you know, pay you a uh, the value for that. Amen. Amen. That's the value we're talking about. So this prosperity gospel where somebody tells you, you know, and you hear it on, on, on Christian TV, you know, and someone says, you know what? I need um, a 99 people to give $99 just now, right now, right now. I hear the spirit. I hear the spirit saying $99, $99, 99 people get on the phone right now, right now and give $99. And as soon as you give that $99 in 99 days, you're going to be debt free. Oh my God. I can't believe that Christians are still falling for that trick. That is a, that's, a, that's an old trick. People are still falling for this same trick. And the person doesn't tell you, listen, you need to go and be industrious. You need to go and get a measure that's, that somebody will be able to exchange value for. And God will bless that your measure to the point that it will be good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Your measure will be blessed by God. That is the part of the prosperity message that the, the preacher does not, does not tell you. They tell you just sow all the seed into my ministry and then they go and buy the private jets and they live in the big mansions and drive the yachts and big cars and everything. And they are the ones getting all the money from you and they don't tell you that, listen, you don't, you don't just sow the seed and go and sit down in your house and magically money begin to enter your bank account. They're supposed to tell you that you are now supposed to go and sit before God and wait before God and extend. Ex you know, receive the idea, receive the concept, receive the wisdom of God. The Bible says wisdom is an inheritance. Wisdom will teach you to profit. Wisdom, the Bible says, will fill your house with all manner of goods, you know, of blessings, of treasure. Why? Because wisdom will give you ideas, concepts, insights. The Bible says there's a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him inspiration, gives him understanding, tells him what to do. God says, I will show you the hidden treasures of secret places such that when you begin to trade in those hidden, hidden treasures of secret places, amen, you will, you will begin to receive the value. Money will begin to come to you. Why? Because people will exchange that idea, exchange that measure for your, with, with money. Amen. 
money is 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 a, it's a concept. Money is an idea. Money is basically if you go and read and study the, the the origin of money. Money came when people began to exchange goods and services, and they felt listen. You know, somebody will come to a market, for example, one person will bring a goat, another person will bring a cow, and it's like okay, do, or someone will say okay, you know what? I have rice and you have goats. So how many goats? Will equal so you know these bags of rice or how many bags of rice equals you know this amount of gold and it was difficult to be able to um calculate equally you know what was the measure to use so they said okay you know what this method of trade by butter is really not working very well because um you know I'm, I, you know, somebody might feel cheated out of their of, of their own goods or of the of their own stuff. So they say, you know what? Okay, let's make a universal currency. Let's rather than exchanging your goods for my my um my rice, okay, let's exchange money instead. So let's agree. So your goods, I'm going to pay you X amount of money for this goods. You pay me X amount of money for this rice. So I can easily give you that money, and you know you can then give me the the goods, and I'll do the same for you as well. And that way we put a value on your product and will exchange currency or money for it. Amen. So those are the kind of ideas and concepts by which money began to be exchanged by people. So rather than exchange goods for goods, they began to exchange goods for money. So it is very simple concept. If you want money or you want you know, prosperity or blessings to come to you, get your measure. The Bible says when you give, God will give you a good measure. That measure is an idea, it's a concept, it's a service, it's a good. It's something that you would do that people will be able to place a value on and pay you the amount of money or, you know, um, pay the amount of money that is equal to that service or that goods. That is a, is a simple nutshell on the principle of prosperity. This is why the world, the people in the world are rich. And the people in the church are poor because the people in the world understand this concept of money that money is just an idea money is it's just basically a, an exchange of goods and services it's an exchange where you give a good or a service and somebody gives you back an equal value of money for that goods and service but people in the church are waiting that you know what once i pay my money or my tithe or my offering into the church or whatever ministry miraculously money will begin to enter my bank account without me doing anything whatsoever I go and sit down and begin to twiddle my thumbs and say I'm praying to God oh God thank you because I've given my seed the man of God said within 99 days I'll be I'll be um, I'll be financially free within 99 days. I'm going to be debt free. So you know what? I thank you father because I've given the $99 that he said and I'm one of those 99 people Therefore within 99 days, I'm going to be free. Thank you God. Thank you God. Thank you because I'm financially free I've given my seed. Thank you God. I begin to pray religious prayers Religious prayers those religious prayers will not help you after those 99 days your debt is looking at you right in the face because you have not done the things that bring money to you. Money is an idea. There are principles. There are principles that God has laid down in the world. That if you follow these principles, it happens automatically. Because he begins to, what, what is God going to bless? You have nothing in your hand to bless. There is nothing in your hand for God to bless. So God is looking for you and say, okay, right, you've given the seed. You've sown the seed, which is great. But now I want you to give me something to bless. Give me something to bless. I need to work with something. What happened? How did Jesus feed the 5,000 people? Did he miraculously just from heaven begin to throw down bread from heaven? No. There was something that Jesus blessed. He blessed a tiny piece of food. He blessed the five loaves and two fish from the little boy's lunch. So God had to, Jesus had to work with something. He was like, okay, you know what? These 5,000 people right now need to be fed. There's more than 5,000 people anyway. With just the men, the 5,000. With the children and the, and the wives, we are looking at almost about 15,000 people, right? So with that 15,000 people to be fed, he said, you know what? I need something to work with. I cannot just miraculously start throwing bread from heaven. But God can do that, but he chooses not to most of the time. So he said, no, well, give me some. What do you have? And I said, look, you know, we have a boy here that has got um, five loaves and two fish. But what is that among so many? And Jesus said, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Give me something to work with. I need a measure. I need a measure to bless. I need something to bless. And the Bible says, what did Jesus do? Jesus took the fish and the loaves and he blessed it. Hallelujah. Why is this so difficult for Christians to understand? That you don't just sow your seed and go and twiddle your thumbs and begin to pray and thank God for whatever. Give God something to bless. Give him something to work with. And he, you know, once, once, the, once the boy released his, his lunch... God, Jesus blessed it. The disciples began to break the bread and fish 
and the miracle began to happen. Multiplication began to happen. So what am I trying to say? Give God something to bless. Give him something to work with. Amen. Let's think about another scripture. If you think, if you don't understand what I'm saying, look at another scripture. Elisha and the widow. Let's read it quickly. Elisha and the widow. What happened? Let's read um, 2 Kings 4. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7. I'm just going to read that quickly. This is the story about Elisha and the widow. Look at how God met this woman's needs. Now she had a need, okay? Look at this story. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take away my children to be, to be his slaves. And Elisha said to, to her, What shall I do for you? And he said, Tell me what you have in your house. Tell me what you have in your house. Now, God was going to meet this woman's need. God was going to bless this woman. But the first thing the, the man of God said to her, tell me what you have in your house. Give me something to bless. I cannot just walk with nothing. I can't pour my blessing into nothing. I need something from you that I can bless. And he, she said to him, your servant has nothing in the house except... Uh, a jar of oil and he said to her go go outside borrow vessels remember the measure i talked about i said god is looking to give you a measure he says go and borrow vessels those vessels were measures he was saying to her go and borrow vessels and not a few then go in and shut the door behind you behind yourselves and your sons and pour into these vessels Begin to pour into these vessels. Amen. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went, so she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And she poured. And, and she poured the as and as she poured the the as she poured, they brought more vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. Now listen, <laughs> this is key. Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another and the oil stopped flowing who limited the blessing who stopped it was it god no he told the woman go and get as many vessels as you can this is key to blessing this is the key to financial breakthroughs this is key to prosperity here it says make vessels make a place make something that i can bless put vessels out there that i'll pour something into i'll pour my blessings into these things so she said to her and the oil stopped flowing and she came to the man of God and said to him, and he said to her, go sell the oil, pay your debts. You and your son shall can live on the rest. So you want to be debt free. This is the key right here. Find something. Speak to God. God gives you a vessel. God gives you a measure. God gives you an idea, a concept, a business solution. Um, solve somebody's problem. All it is, solve a problem. If you solve a problem in life, people will pay you for it. That's all it is. That is a simple key to being blessed financially. It's not about you sowing your money into some place and just throwing money in the bucket. No, it's about you getting wisdom, getting ideas from God, getting concepts, insights. The Bible says wisdom will teach you the knowledge of witty inventions. Amen. That's what God gives you. Because of your connection to him, he will give you the knowledge, the wisdom you need to, to, to form businesses, to create ventures, to join with people, to set up industry, to, you know, break the mold. Hallelujah. Give you ideas, wisdom and concepts such that he will bless that work, bless that idea, bless that concept, bless that value. And people begin to sow or give you a multiplied harvest, a multiplied seed. Money begins to come to you when you exchange your ideas idea your va your goods and services for that money that's how the money begins to come and that's how the good measure pressed down shaking together running over begins to come it's the same way with this woman she had a good measure pressed down shaking over running over blessing because she had something in her hand for god to bless she had the oil for god to bless and when god blessed it there was a running over blessing the same thing with the fish and the loaves when jesus blessed it there was a running over blessing amen god has to bless something god has to bless something you know i don't understand this concept where people just think just sow your seed into my ministry sow your seed into my life Life. right now you know on the phone there are people on the phone ready to receive your offering you know if you give your you know 199 dollars in 99 minutes you know you're going to get to 99 within 99 days you're going to be financially free and they begin to coerce and begin to 
to, to, to I don't know, man. Seriously, listen. Am I the only one person that gets gets upset by hearing things like that? Because I realize, and I know from the word of God that that is not how God works. God is not a magician. He doesn't just, God has principles and concepts. There are so many unbelievers today that don't give their tithes and offering into your church or into your ministry. And yet they are billionaires and they are millionaires and they are blessed and they are giving so much to charity and doing so much for charity, even more than the children of God are doing. That, that is not good. That is not right. And in my heart, I want to see that change in my lifetime. I want to see believers that understand the concept of, of business and enterprise, understand the concept of money, entrepreneurs that will break, you know, go into industry and understand these things and not just, you know, be hoodwinked and be, 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 be coerced and duped by this false, false wrong doctrine of, uh, of um, you know, prosperity that people are preaching this false you know prosperity message that just says just give your money into the bucket instantly miracles begin to happen that is wrong that is a, that's crazy that's wrong people should be taught correctly believers should be taught correctly i love giving i love sowing but i understand the concept that i need to give god something to work with i need to give him a seed i need to give him even a farmer it is even basic farming you know if you go back and read let's go back and read Mal malachi 3 the very scripture that they used to preach tithe and offering every day. Let's go back and understand that scripture. Because the only part they tell you is the part of sowing your seed into their ministry. They don't tell you the other part that you need to sow the seed into the ground. A farmer does not just, you know, wish and hope that his farm will begin to produce without putting seed in the ground. There is no seed in the ground, there will be no harvest because you need to put seeds in the ground. That is how basic farming 101. If without seeds in the ground, farmer, you don't just sit down and just twiddle your thumbs and pray and thank God for a harvest without having put seed in the ground. Then the prosperity preacher will tell you, well, the seed you're supposed to put it in is inside my ministry. Put that money into my ministry. And instantly, farmer, when you put your seed into my ministry, instantly your ground or your farm will begin to produce food without putting seed in the ground. Does this make sense to you? This is how people preach. This is a prosperity message that prosperity preachers preach. That you know what? Just plant that your seed, bring it to my house, bring your seed into my house. And your farmer, without putting your seed in your own ground, right? Miraculously, your crops will begin to produce. That is mad. But that is exactly what prosperity preachers, most people will tell you to do. That's crazy. Now let's go back and read um, Malachi 3.10. It says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Okay, we understand that part. So give it into the house of God. That's great. We understand that part. Then he said, thereby put me to the test, says the Lord. If I will not open up the windows of heaven for you, and pour you out a blessing until there's no more room or need in your life. Now, let's, let me read this from the NIV. It's a bit clearer there. I want to show you something. When I was studying this this morning, I was like, whoa, God. I don't know where we got this wrong concepts from. Malachi 3, let me read it from verse 10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see... If I will not open or if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven, pause. Remember, where else have we seen the floodgates of heaven? And what does that refer to? The floodgates of heaven refers to rain. That's when, when the Bible talks about the flood of Noah, it says that the heaven, the, the, wind, the floodgates were opened, the windows were opened of heaven, and rain poured down upon the earth and flooded the whole earth. So when the Bible, listen, when the Bible, there's a, there's a principle, you read the Bible, there's a law of first, um, first mention, you go back and read other scriptures where this same concept has been used. So when, the, when, when, when this prophet was talking about, I will throw open the floodgates of heaven, he was literally talking about rain. And pour you out so much blessing that there will be not enough room to store it. Pause. What is he talking about here? He's talking about the storehouse. He's talking about this farmer. And this is... This illustration, now let, let's read it, I'll, see, I'll come back to this, what I'm trying to say. It says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. This illustration here is practical. This is talking about a farmer who is sowing seeds, 
God is saying to that farmer, I will pour out the windows of heaven. I will pour out rain upon your, your farm. Maybe in that, in that area there was a drought and you know the, the, the crops are not growing. God is saying, when you give, I'm going to release the blessings from heaven and pour out rain upon your farm. Then God says, I will prevent pests. I'm reading from the NIV. I'll prevent pests from devouring your crops. And the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Listen, this is practical. This is basic. God is not just saying to the farmer, do you know what? Carry all your seeds and go to the house of God and drop your seeds there. And when you drop your seeds, just go back to your farm and begin to shout and praise and thank God and say thank you for my bountiful harvest because my harvest is coming. But that's what many prospective preachers will tell you. You know what? Just bring your seed into the storehouse. Plant it in the storehouse and miraculously your, far your farm will begin to produce crops. No. The Bible is saying here, it's talking to the farmer. He's saying to the farmer, yes, go and give your seed. Go and give your blessings, you know, to the house of God. That's fine. Then he says, I will bless you. And he says, I will pour out the, you know, the, I will open the floodgates of heaven. I will rain upon your farm. Then I will prevent the, the pests that destroy the crops. I will stop them from destroying your crops. Then he says, the vines, your vines in the field will not drop their fruit before they are ripe. This is practical. This is from the same verse and the same scripture read in context where he's talking about a farmer and his farm and the fact that God is going to bless that farmer richly and the Bible says, all the nations will call you blessed because I'll make your land a delightful land. You'll be like a farmer who's got other people are struggling to produce crops, but your crops are producing. Why? Because I've blessed you. But there has to be seed in the ground. You have to have something for me to bless. You have to have something. You have to have a measure for me to bless. And listen, God said, I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Listen, I've got a jug of water here. Let me show you this illustration. So, imagine that this is the measure. This is the measure that you have as a farmer. So this is your crop. So this is your whatever it is. This is your business idea. This is your, your product that you're selling. Okay? God says, when you sow your seeds into the house of God, okay, I'm going to bless you. But for me to bless you, now I need something to bless. Give me something to work with. I remember I talked about the, the Elisha and the woman, um, the widow, and he said to her, what do you have? And she said to him, I have only a jar of oil in my house. And he said, go and, go and bring it or, you know, get vessels and pour it out. So there was something to bless. Remember the, the feeding of the 5,000, there was two loaves and there was two loaves and five fishes or five fish and Jesus blessed it and multiplied it. So God is saying to you as a believer, You've sown your seeds, you've given your tithes and offerings, you've done all that good stuff, that's great. But give me something to bless. Give me so, a measure to bless. Give me an idea, give me a concept, give me your business, give me your you know, goods or services. Give me something that I'm going to bless. And God says, I will pour out from, from heaven. So God says, I will pour out, amen? You begin to pour into your measure. You begin to pour into your measure. And it says, you will so pour into that measure that there will not be enough room to receive it. It begins to become, it becomes a running over blessing. The water, the, the water begins to sprout out everywhere. You begin around you. Let me take a sip of water. Amen. You will not just be a blessing to yourself, but also a blessing to other people all around you. Because God will begin to bless you more than you can even ask or imagine. That's what he's talking about. God needs something to bless. So let's stop this lazy preaching. Because this type of prosperity message breeds laziness and wishful thinking. Because you have people who would, the Bible says, if any man used to steal, should no longer steal, but rather let him work with his hands. Let him work with his hands. Give me something to bless. Work with your hands so that God can bless it. So that he may have something to give. Now, when he has something to give, God will be able to bless the works of your hands. God says, I will bless the works of of your hands so if your hands are idle the bible says if you are an idle person 
If the man that will not work, let him not eat. This is the same Bible we're talking about. But the prosperity preacher will only tell you about giving into his into his into his church or giving to his ministry or whatever it is. He won't tell you the fact that you need to be industrious. You need to go back and work. You need to go back and you know be industrious. Get something. Do something. Bring something. Get give some God something to bless. Amen. Give God something to bless. Let us stop this craziness that is going on in the church. It's crazy. It's crazy. We need to stop this. You see it on TV all the time and you're like, come on. How many people are still falling for this trick? Yet people are falling for it every day. Do you want the kind of wealth that Abraham had? The Bible says Abraham's blessing are mine. Yes, I believe in Abraham's blessing. The Bible talks about it in Genesis um, in um, Genesis 12. talks about it in Galatians 3. That the blessing of Abraham might be, you know, Giving to the Gentiles as well. That you and I can be a partaker of that blessing. I so much believe in that. But go back and look at the life of Abraham. Abraham was not a lazy man. Abraham did not just sit in his house and wishful thinking. Thinking that you know the blessings will begin to come. No. Abraham the Bible says was, was prosperous. Was great. Was blessed in, in, in gold and in silver and in cattle and in camels. He had servants. He had Why? Why did he have so many servants? Why? Because he needed people to tend his farms. He needed people to look after his, his, his um, cattle and you know his his donkeys and his, his camels and things like that. He was a man that used to trade. He used to do business. He was a businessman. Amen. Abraham was so rich that when he when he fought the king of um you know when he when he when he and he and his servants you know went to rescue Lot and his family and they fought and he said to told the king of Sodom he said uh, told the king said listen I'm not going to take any of your stuff I don't need it so that you would not say that you made Abraham rich no Abraham was so rich where is how many of us read the Bible the Bible says you shall lend to nations and you shall not borrow that is part of our covenant that is part of what the inheritance we have in God but yet Yet, we are not living up to that covenant. We see Abraham, a, a man that was bl a blessing, that was, that was able to give so much. Isaac and Jacob, the same thing. These are the people we are following after. These are the people that we live our lives by. We go back and read their, 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 their stories in the Bible. And we don't follow the same things that they did. What, did. what did God say to Isaac when there was a famine in the land? Isaac was thinking about going to Egypt. God said, don't do that. What did God say? Did God say... You know what, Isaac, begin to just lift your hands and begin to thank me and worship me. Miraculously, food is going to appear. No. He said to Isaac, Isaac, sow in that land. Sow in that land. Sow in that land. Put seed in the ground. Give me something to bless. We, are we reading the same Bible? Or am I reading a different Bible from what most of these people are reading? The, Jesus, God, God said to Isaac, sow in that land. And I will bless it. And I will multiply it. And God said, the Bible says, he sold in the land and God gave him a hundredfold return. These are principles that were seed in the ground. There was seed in the ground. And he's not just talking about carrying seed into the church. Yes, he would do that. Yes, he would do. He would give to the temple. Yes, he did. But he, there was seed in his ground. He had business. He had something for God to bless. So people of God, we need something for God to bless. It's not magic. Yes, when they were in the wilderness, the Bible says God gave them manna for 40 years. Day and night, they ate the manna from heaven. But the moment they got to Canaan, the Bible says the, the, the manna stopped. Why did the manna not continue? Because God had shown them and said, look, I've taken care of you. I can take care of you, but I want to show you my preferred method of blessing you. It's not just going to be falling from heaven. My preferred method is for you to till the ground. It's for you to sow seed so that I can bless and multiply it. Amen. That's God's preferred method. So you see preachers, prosperity preachers, they'll sit down and wait for, you know, manna to fall from heaven. And when it doesn't fall, they scream and shout out, oh God, God did not meet or supply my need. Whatever it is. Did you put seed in the ground? Do you have something for God to bless? Is there something? Is there, where's the works of your hands for God to bless? Where is something that God will bless? Amen. Give God something to work with. This is basic stuff. This is why the church folk are poor. And why the people in the world are rich. Because the people in the world understand these basic concepts of prosperity. The basic concepts of industry. The basic concepts of money. It's basically an exchange of goods and services for an equal value of money. What someone else is willing to pay for that goods and services. So we as believers don't have goods and services in exchange to exchange 
for the money. So that's where the that's where the prosperity that's where the poverty comes from. It's not because you, you're giving it's not working. It's because you're not giving God anything to bless. God is looking for a measure to bless. He's giving you. He wants you to give him something to bless. So the rich understand this. This is why the, there's so many billionaires and millionaires out there who understand the concept of of, of entrepreneurship, where they, they 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 get you know money to work for them rather than working for money. So yes, we understand the concept of going to work nine to five and stuff. Yes, you have to do that if you want to, but don't don't be limited by that because that that nine to five is a cap. There's a cap on it, which means you cannot go beyond a certain measure. But if you want an, you know, a kind of blessing running over that you can now bless other people, may give God other avenues to bless. Give God a cup that, uh, 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 vessels that God can pour into. Amen. Glory be to God. So I want to encourage you, wherever you are right now, this is a basic teaching. I hope, you know, you understand my heart, what I'm talking about. When I see this prosperity message on TV, just say, you know, without balance without teaching people that yes give it's great but you need to give something to bless god something to bless give him a measure to bless give him a, uh, your goods or services your business or whatever it is your concept your ideas if you don't have one go and sit down and ask him for one and he will give it to you amen amen if you cannot work with your hands, that's, that's, we understand people are disabled or you know, not able to work. We understand that, and, you know, the system takes care of them. That's understandable. But we need to be industrious. We need to be able to sow seeds, not just sow seeds, but give God something to work with. Give God your business ideas. Give him your concept. Give him something to bless. God is looking for something to bless. So don't limit God. Find investments that you can sow into. Find investments that you can do. You know, you can invest in various things. So rather than you working from money nine to five, day in, day out, year in, year out, and you're barely making ends meet, rather make your money work for you. You know, if you've never read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, go and read that book. It's a basic starter. It's a good place to start. I personally, I, I want to do, do a seminar where I'm going to teach people business and concepts and investments where they can, you know, different things they can do. You can invest in real estate. You can invest in property. You can do it in your, by yourself or you invest in somebody who does and they give you a rate of return. They give you an, a return for your money based on your agreement. You can invest in, um, you know, in stocks, in bonds. You know, you can invest in uh, e-commerce. You know, you can invest in, go start an Amazon business. You know, start a, a Shopify business or something like that. You can do internet marketing. You know, you can do coaching. You can do whatever, you know, look, if you've got a skill, even if your skill is just knitting, you know, you can teach people how to knit and they will pay you for that service. They'll pay you for that time to teach them how to sew or how to knit. It's anything, whatever skill you have, you can teach somebody else. And person, if your skill is just playing the piano, you can teach somebody else how to play the piano and they will pay you for that service. So what am I saying? Every one of us has got something. You've got something. What did God say to Moses? When he wanted to set the Israelites free, he said to Moses, what's in your hand? And I'm asking you that same question today. The same question Elisha asked the, the widow when she came to meet him, that, you know, she, her, uh, she was poor and she was in debt. And Elisha said to her, what's in your hand? What's in your house? And she said, I only have a jar of oil. And he said, that's enough. That's all I need. I need something from you. So, you know what God is saying to you? If you're in debt today, if, you, if you're poor, and you, this, what this message is speaking to you, God is asking you, What's in your hand? What's in your house? Give me something to bless. It's an idea. It's a concept. It's, it's something that I can work with. I will bless it. I will multiply it. And why that? People will exchange that your goods and service for money. Money will begin to come to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Men shall give into your bosom when I bless that your idea. That's what I'm talking about. I hope you were able to understand what I said. If you know anyone who needs to hear this message, I believe every believer needs to hear this. It's a balanced teaching on prosperity. I'm not telling you, come and give all your money to me. Like, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, get, get so into you, the, your church, so into whatever ministry you're sowing into, whatever it is. But at the same time, give God something to bless. Give him a measure with which he will pour out his blessing upon you. Think about this. When God was talking about the rain, in uh, Malachi 3, he said he will pour upon you a blessing, rain. Think about this. If the rain is falling outside and you want some water, if you don't put a basin outside, if you don't put 
uh, something to collect that water, that rain outside. What's going to happen? That rain is just going to pour down and you don't have anything to collect the rain. You have no water to drink or to, or to use or whatever. You know, why? Because you didn't put a measure outside. He did not put a measure. This is basic. I can't understand. You know, when I, when Lord began to show me this thing this morning, I'm like, whoa, where did we, how did we miss this? He needs a measure. You need to put the, the basin or the bucket outside to collect the rain. So the rain is pouring everywhere. There's money going everywhere in the world. As you and I are speaking, there's transfers happening. People are exchanging money. They're exchanging goods and services all over the world. But you need to put your measure out there for some of that money to come to you. That's how people are going to get that money to you. You need your, your own goods and services. You need your own concepts and ideas that people are willing to pay for to be able to pour that money into your own bucket, into your own measure. And the Bible says you shall receive a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over type of blessing. Shall men pour into your bosom, into your measure. So you need a measure. That's what I'm talking about. So get a measure. Get something that people can bless, that God can bless, that people can pour and sow into or give into or exchange money for. Get an idea. Maybe your, your idea is basically, I can teach people maths and you, you, you begin to teach maths to students or to whatever. I, this, is, this is a simple idea. You know, you're looking for money. This is for people I know who probably are broke and bust. You know, and like, listen, but you understand you can teach maths, you know. Get people together and begin to offer maths lessons. Simple simple idea begin to offer maths lessons and you will see that people would, would be able to be able to, to to give you an exchange of monetary value for that your time of teaching their children or teaching them maths simple idea simple idea then your math teaching can get to the point where you say you know what you now have a, a lesson where you begin to get people together begin to teach them give them maths lessons begin to teach them you know how to pass their gcses or things like that now you are beginning to be industrious. Now you begin to in, in, in employ other people to teach those same courses. Or now you don't know, you're not just maths, you are teaching English, you are teaching science, you are teaching other subjects. And that's how businesses begin to happen. That's an idea. That's an idea. People are going to be able to pay for it. And now you're not just going to limit yourself to teaching it by a physical location. You can teach it online. Amen. All of a sudden, your measure is no longer that tiny cup. Now it's like a big, massive basin. Because you, your, your market is no longer just that tiny locality you are. Your market is now the whole world. This is the value of what the internet has done for us. You can reach the whole world instantly. That's your measure. Your measure begins to be magnified by 1 million percent. So that same value, that same skill of teaching maths, not just to those 5 or 10 people, but now you now give it to the whole world that has access to your math classes. You can teach maths online. Amen. All of a sudden, people begin to pay you for teaching maths online. That's an idea. That's an idea. So what am I saying? You can spend time with God. Find out what you have in your house. What is that? What is that? That, that wisdom, that skill, that, that's something that you have that is unique to you. It may not be just you anyway. Some other person may have it. But how can you package that thing differently and present it to the world that people will say, Whoa, I need this thing this guy is talking about. I need this goods or this service. I want this. Amen. That's an idea. That's a concept. That's an insight. That's what wisdom will do for you. That's what you should be praying and asking for. After you've given your seeds, Sit down with God. Spend time meditating in His presence. Begin to talk to Him. Say, God, give me ideas. Give me thoughts. Begin to come into your mind. Ideas, concepts, wisdom, ideas begin to come. And that's how it happens. Amen. I hope this has blessed you. If this blesses you, share with a friend. Share with someone that needs to hear this. It's a balanced teaching on prosperity. Don't just throw your seeds out into the open like that. Just throw it into the church like, you know, it's a wasted effort. When you, spend, when you, when you sow your seeds, get a measure. Give God something to bless and he will bless you abundantly. That there will not be enough room in your storehouse to receive it because your blessings will be good measure, pressed down, running over, shall men pour into your bosom. God bless you guys, man. Have a wonderful day. Go out and win. Go out and be a blessing to somebody else. Go out and be prosperous in Jesus' name. Amen. So have a wonderful day. Take care, guys. Bye.